forth, where all the Bs are positive. If you have that, and you have that, they have to be a decreasing list, all right, that's important, they have to be decreasing. They have to have limit zero as k goes to infinity. If you have all that, then this is a, a convergent, a convergent alternating series, and this is the alternating series test. More than that, though, it also comes with a super nice error estimation. This is very cool. The, and you, you could see this in the example, right? The even partial sums are less than the actual sum are less than the odd partial sums. So the actual answer for the series, what it sums to, is between the even and the odd partial sums. And you can get as close as you want to the answer by just going sufficiently far out. If you put these two things together, the error in the nth partial sum, it has to be at most, it's at most the next term that you haven't used. All right? Um, and, and the proof here is, is given, and it's, 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 not essential, it's not especially interesting. I will just tell you this, that the proof of the alternating series test essentially is just observing that what happened in that example happens in general. It's really just that. It's, it's observing that what we saw in example four happens, happens for an arbitrary alternating series. And in fact, doing that example before I wrote this proof made my proof make much more sense. So if you're interested in your math major, please study the proof. Otherwise, let's apply it, okay? Um, oh, this remark, I'm like, all right, fine. To be like annoying like the rest of my tests, I really should start at the alternating series at n naught rather than one. So you could do all of this starting at n at n naught rather than one. Why didn't I do that? just to try to make this a little bit less intimidating as a statement. I just started at one rather than n naught to declutter my proofs. So, my bad. Here's an example. <clears throat> Suppose you've got minus one to the k over k times e to the k, all right? So we've got a positive term, it limits zero. Um, I'm not, it's, it's actually, this is really, I would say it's almost unnecessary what I'm doing, but I'm just trying to make sure it's really decreasing, right? And to, sh to see that this is a decreasing function, easiest thing for me, differentiate it. I get this, that's clearly negative, therefore for sure that is a decreasing function of k. Um, so I have satisfied the terms and conditions of the alternating series test and I get that the sum k equals one to infinity of minus one to the k over k e to the k converges by the alternating series test. <clears throat> Here's another one, minus one to the k over log k. This time I've got bk is over log, bk is one over log k. Again, this limits zero, it's positive, it's decreasing. Therefore, by the alternating series test, that is a convergent series. It's, this is a wonderful test. I mean, this is, I, I love the alternating series test. It's very, very nice. Um, so this, you say, well, okay, well, what do we use these for? You might ask that question. And the answer is we use them for approximations often. I mean, that's really ultimately the question. So I, I've tried to sell you guys. I really haven't tried too hard to sell you, sell you on it. I'm assuming that you're going to be patient with me and realize that this course is required for your major because engineers have always taken calculus and it's part of your culture and understanding it. And, and then decrying its uselessness when you actually get jobs is also part of your culture. So you'll, you'll be that person too someday. I, I, I met people in the Navy when I worked with engineers who were very proud of the fact they hadn't done calculus in 20 years. They're very, very um, proud of the fact that they didn't understand any of the basic theory that underlies everything that they're doing in their job. Um, I just don't think that that's a wise thing to be proud about, but whatever, teach their own. So um, it's a problem though with, um, let me not get off on the problems with government. There are many. but. Um, so here, it turns out, again, this is one of those it turns out, when we study Taylor series, we will find that there's a, a series that's given for sine theta, namely this, theta minus one over three factorial theta cubed plus one over five factorial theta to the fifth and so forth, all right? What is this? This is an alternating series, right? Plus, minus, plus, minus. If theta is positive, it just goes plus, minus, plus, minus, right? If theta is negative, it goes, wait a minute, if theta is negative, minus plus 
minus, it's still an alternating series, it just goes minus plus, minus plus, minus plus, right? So whether theta is positive or negative, it's an alternating series. And you can ask the question, what if you just replace theta, sine theta with theta? How does that go? So if you believe the alternating series estimation theorem, it says that the error in just replacing theta by just sine by just theta, well, the error is only as big as the next thing you haven't used. That's what the estimation theorem says. So the error in sine theta minus theta is just theta cubed over sixth. So for example, if you tried to approximate sine of one as just being equal to theta, which is B1, well, sine of one minus one, it actually, this is, um, this is, if you actually plug in sine into your calculator, which is still not evil, so we can trust it, um, sine in radians gives you, you know, um, point, well, anyway, it, the difference of sine in radians in one is point 0.1585. Um, and what is, well, if I plug one into this, I get one sixth, which is point 0.1666, right? And um, so it worked, right? The estimation theorem worked. And then you can ask more interesting questions like, what if you, what if you used the, the first two terms rather than just using theta? Say you approximated sine theta by theta minus the, theta cubed over six. Well, in that case, the error would be bounded by the next term, which we haven't used, which is theta the fifth over five factorial, which is 120. And you can see that that works because one over 120 is about 0.833, and the error was 0.08082, and again, bounding, right? Then I can turn the tables and I can say, okay, well, what's the biggest choice of theta that I can have if I want to maintain sine theta equals to theta within a percent, right? And if you study that, you're actually asking the question, I want theta cubed over six to be less than 0.01 by the alternating series estimation theorem. This inequality we can solve with the, the cube root and we get the theta is less than the cube root of 0 0.06, which is about 0.39. That doesn't really mean anything to you guys in radians, right? You don't, no, no one here has an intuition for radians geometrically, right? Nobody. How many radians is 0.39? Go. I mean, how many degrees? Ah, so you just reject degrees. Oh, okay. Well, it's 22 point, <laughs> he's, he's like about like that, yeah. That is, I mean, you can, fine, it's, it's fair enough. If you remember, there's six radians to go all the way around, about 0.4 is about kind of sort of like a little bit less than like an hour on the clock, kind of sort of, it's about, anyway, work it out, 22.4 degrees. What this means is if you approximate sine theta with theta, that approximation is reasonable to within 0.01, which is about a percent, right? up to 20, about 20 degrees. This is why in your physics course, when we talk about pendulums, if you look at the calculation there, you replace like sine theta with theta. That's a reasonable calculation as long as your theta is not big. If theta is big, then you have to include the higher order terms to correct it. And then, well, then you still can't do the math, so. <laughs> All right, so finally the disturbing calculation I had advertised here. So the alternating harmonic series is a conditionally convergent series. Why? Because it converges by the picture on the, the right board, right? I mean, left board, whatever, that one. So it converges, and yet its absolute value is the harmonic series, which we know diverges. This is a conditionally convergent series. Look at this calculation. So I take one minus a half plus a third, right? And I just take that third, and oh, I'm just going to take that third. I'm just going to move it over here, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll take that fifth, and I'm just going to scooch that one. I'm going to scooch that fifth over to here. And I'm just going to keep doing that, you know? Just keep, just keep moving these terms, like a little bit over, like that. You can do that. Just do it forever and ever. Just always take the you know, third one and scooch it down a couple in the, the list. Repeat this process. This is called rearranging the series. So. You're taking the same terms, you're just adding them in a slightly different order, right? That shouldn't matter, should it? Oh, it can. See, because when you do that here, <laughs> this cancels to give you a half, and these also reduce to give you like, uh, you know, um, let's see here. Anyway, you, so we, we get from here to here, just canceling that, and uh, I think I don't know if I did anything else. Maybe, I think I may have done, the, yeah, the one-third minus one-sixth is one-sixth, right? And so there's some, there's some um, one-fifth minus 
one tenth is one tenth. Yeah. See that? All right. So anyway, there's a pattern here, and then you can factor out a half, and you get oh, you get one half times what is this? Oh, hey, that's the alternating harmonic series again. Wait a minute, what? So the alternating harmonic series is equal to one half times the alternating harmonic series. Well, I don't know about you, but the only number I know of that's equal to one half itself is zero. So therefore, the alternating harmonic series is zero, except that it's not. So what's wrong with this calculation? The what? Math didn't math. The math didn't math, yeah. The thing that's wrong with the calculation is the first equality. It's not true. The reason it's not true is because this is a conditionally convergent series and you cannot rearrange the terms in a conditionally convergent series unless you don't care about its value. Because when you rearrange the terms in a conditionally convergent series, you can change its sum, as we saw here. In fact, this is one half log two, right? So this is the, this is the diabolical thing, is that when you have a conditionally convergent series, you can rearrange the terms to make it add up to whatever you want. It's worse than this. You can actually rearrange the terms so that it diverges. This is what Riemann proved in like 1850 or so. So, absolute convergence on the other hand is wonderful. Absolute convergence, you can rearrange it all day long. It doesn't, <laughs> ch doesn't change the value of the series. Absolutely convergent series don't suffer this, this problem. Um, and you can do many other things with absolutely convergent series, which we'll talk about. All right, so up next. Oh man, well I see something else I need to fix. So I'm not going to prove these today, and I won't even give you examples, probably, maybe. But you guys said you wanted me to finish showing you the test so you could finish your homework, right? I kept hearing this from many, many of you in different contexts. In my physics class, I hear, when are you going to finish the divergence test so we can finish our homework? I hear it. I hear it. I hear you. So he, this is all that's left. The ratio test. The ratio test says if you, if you look at the ratio of the k plus 1th term and the kth term, um, and you calculate that limit, if that's supposed to be, a, I, I missed this, this is the thing. If the rho is less than 1, it converges, absolutely. And if it's greater than 1, it diverges. Woohoo! That's the, that's the ratio test. The, um, and I have some examples here I will post later. Then the other test is the root test. If the limit as k goes to infinity of the kth root of the absolute value of k exists, if L is less than 1, it converges absolutely. If L is greater than 1, it diverges. That is the end of the story. That is all the convergence tests we get this semester. Um, so I will try to post these notes. I do have some things, I do have some examples that have explicit like k, fac k factorials in them and things, but anyway. I will prove these tests, we'll prove one of them at least, and, uh, and show you examples of that tomorrow most likely. So, thanks guys. When should we have a quiz in here again? Never. Never? Probably, <laughs> I owe you a quiz. Probably, probably Thursday.